Okay, we're going to replace the fan motor on a Coleman Mac uh, air conditioner, roof air for a um, Fleetwood 2003 model. Uh, 36B is the model of Fleetwood Pace Air. Uh, when I turn the switch on for air, it just hums and you feel just a little bit of air moving out of the vent. So I turn it off and uh, let's go. To, I've taken the cover off. There's only four screws, Phillips screws. And these Phillips screws take a large uh, Phillips uh, uh, head. So don't try a little small one or you're, you're just going to screw this thing up. This is hard. It, it should just spin, and it's not spinning. Now, one thing you should notice is take a picture of the way this thing looks. There's five leads here. The motor and the replacement motor will show the colors and uh, what they go to. But the main thing is you're going to want to position this um, fan blade at the same location that it is now you know not too far in not too far out it looks like if you look the blade is about halfway in the center of this deal you could measure this distance right there to get it accurately okay this is not a hard job it's just going to take a little planning and the hardest part is probably getting the motor out getting these um, fan blades off there's another one in the squirrel cage. This has to come off and then you'll get access to it. But I'm going to show you how uh, we do that and it might make your job easier. Okay, turn the total power off to the rig. You don't want any AC power. Now, uh, you don't have to take all these screws loose. There's three screws. Let me put this right here. There's three screws and I've already taken this plate off. One here, one there, and one there. And then you can push down and you got access to the wires. Well, good morning, cause it is morning and that's when you wanna work on air conditioners so you'll be ready for the afternoon. This is my front air conditioner fan motor. And now in the first part of the video you saw I just kind of went over the basics of where things were laid out and what it amounts to is like this is the front uh, this is the open area and the condenser is back here and there's a fan on this is the way it's mounted there's five screws Phillip head screws three across the top and two across the bottom and two support mounts here that hold this in place but before you attempt to uh, pull all of these out you need to remove the fan now it's probably easier to to drive it off this way and use a uh, like a flat tip um, or something uh, you don't want to tear your fan up now and rotate the fan around after you use a 5 16 um, uh, Allen to loosen the collar and this is goes around the collar I just left it in place once that's loosened up then you can move the um, uh, the uh, fan blades a little at a time and move it right on back until you drive it off a little at a time you don't have to drive it hard just a little bit you could spray some penetrating oil on here ahead of time and let it sit for a while rotating the shaft around and letting it really work in good and that may help uh, remove this but just little taps going back with with some sort of a tool that's blunt that you can put up against the edge of the fan blade uh, shank that goes out not the blade itself but that shank and uh, it will slowly move off and then you will move it over to the side as far as it'll go up into the shroud and then you'll have room once you've pulled these all loose that 
and you want to cut your wires off. I leave the wires attached uh, to the connection so that later when I take the, uh, the new motor up, I can match up those wire pigtails. Now I'm going to take them off and put the brand new connections on, but this will make it easy to identify the color. It's pretty easy, uh, unless you're colorblind, uh, you might want to get some help because brown and black look very similar. But when you get a new motor, they made it easy and put the ca capacitor leads uh, with spade clips. See, the two brown leads. And it's very important that you match up the uh, striped white and the solid brown on the correct terminals. It's polarized, so make sure you look or take a picture before you do this so that you get it correct, okay? You'll still have the pigtails on there if you cut it like I showed you and be able to easily uh, identify them. Now, you may have to take a screwdriver or something because it's kind of stuck. Whoop. And leave your, your parts on here. I'll put this over the side. Uh, it's a little stuck there, so a gentle little prying there will pop it loose. Once it's popped loose, now this is what I found, is when you pull it out and move it a little to the left and between the blades, individual blades, you can just pull this right out of the hole and just as one solid unit. It worked beautifully. Just be careful and don't shove this into your uh, uh, evaporator coils or you're going to have a new problem to deal with. So be careful. And, and it really doesn't take much to rotate this out. Once you've got it out, then uh, if you're on top of the roof like I am, wrap something around a uh, rope or something and lower this down to the side. And you want to work on this on, on a work surface and not up on the roof. Uh, it'd be much easier just to bring it down and then bring your new motor up, okay? Uh, now, uh, you want to take all of these parts loose. You're going to have to take the support and you're going, I think this is a nine millimeter uh, uh, nut and you just have to take that off and there's a new one over here for this. Uh, on the back side, you're going to have to take this off and this is the same, I think it's five sixteenths and you just uh, unloosen this. Now this will be a lot easier to get off because it's clean and not rusty because it was in a cover. Okay, so this one will not be hard. Uh, but you're going to need, there's actually, if you had long um, Allen tools, there is a slot that you could stick a long tool in there and uh, get that out. I don't have one, so I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. Once you've gotten the, uh, the screw completely loose, a little rocking and pulling, it comes off very easily. And uh, before you did that, you want to kind of look at the distance it was, and you can kind of tell that when you take it off. Nine millimeters is what you need. Some sort of a tool. I've got a nine millimeter socket that will work great. And all you need is a little bit of the insulation out of there. As you put your tool in there, it's probably going to crush it out. And let's, we're going to loosen this up and take it all the way off. All four of these. There. There's the old motor. And one other thing we've got to do, but before I do that, it's best to complete one portion at a time. Like I've taken this plate off. Before I take the supporting bracket, I'm going to go ahead because I know exactly I orientate this just like that. And uh, I'm going to make sure that I put the proper holes. I want this screw right here. I want it facing down, so I need that facing down for sure. Notice I have that wrong. Three screws should be on the top, so it should be like this. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. As long as it's on the bottom, uh, it looks like it's not going to line up exactly, but that's not important. Main thing is you got that there and the three screws and the two screws on the bottom, okay? Now, I simply, I'm gonna start with the bottom and put him on just a little bit. Finger tight. And I'll put this, and notice there's a star. That's a kind of a washer, lock washer. So put him toward the, the base. And he goes right back into the place where he was. Just kind of snug it up. And then the other down with a nice firm tightening. Okay, now we've got everything we need. Now we need to take that little mount off and you can see this and that doesn't line up on the old one so it's no problem and this should be nine two there but you always want to look at things like that to make sure you get the distances correct so, since this has got a flat spot, you got to line it up with this flat spot. And this part will be out. And you just put it right on there. And it should just go on pretty easy without any loose. I'm going to pull her back just a little bit because I don't want it uh, rubbing on there. Okay, so I... I pushed it all the way in and then I pulled it back just a smidgen because that's what it looks like I need to do. In the middle there, um, I think I, I misjudged. plate mounted and the squirrel cage is uh, or the fan is in the squirrel cage this is mounted with the two bolts and right here this is mounted notice how it nicely turns and I position this fan to the the same amount that it sticks out here so before you take this out you want to look and see where that fan fits first thing I'm going to do is take the the solid brown and the white, uh, the brown with the white tracer, and connect them to the uh, capacitor down there. It's, it's pull him out like this. That's the capacitor. Over here, and take a tool and pry it up like that. Okay, because you can damage the wire. But it's not going to hurt anything, so we're going to put the brown wire, we're going to follow it, and put it through the hole. There's the white brown with white tracer, I'm going to stick him through there. This way you're going to do one wire at a time and not get confused, because you don't want a confusion factor. Okay, just pull that wire on through. And I tell you, the others you can kind of, you want to make sure you got the, the room and everything. Okay. Now, right straight across from the solid, I plug him in. And rock it like that. This is the solid brown. And it goes right across from this one. Okay. Now, I stick him back in his little cradle. There's a little place it sticks into. We'll start with the, the white. We pull, pull him out. Okay, and now we're going to take 
the white one from here and see it's got a it's got a bare end so just kind of bend it back stick him in there and then what you're going to do is you can cut this off each one of these we're going to cut those off right there you're not going to leave this uh, and connect to this one you're going to cut this whole thing off and put a fresh connector on the white wire here and that white wire and we're going to do that for each of the colors so i think you can handle that i'll come back when i got one done okay i got the white one now we're going to do the black one and again i pull this one the black wire out and then real close i'm going to snip this off and then with my spli or a skinning tool get your there we go get you a nice amount then what you want is the black lead bend it back and come through the hole come over and then twist these together like this together real good take your wire nut until it tightens in there okay there's that one now we got the the red one see how easy this is this is not hard and uh, I don't have to worry about getting electrocuted I actually pull the plug out of the socket them close together and then twist them and then take your wire nut and you don't want any uh, copper showing out of these because these are uh, protecting you from uh, shock now they're going to be in a compartment so they're not going to really be dangerous to you as long as they're in the compartment and then we just put everything back in here and before we button everything back up you need to do a test run you know crank everything up uh, before you seal it all up to be sure that everything is going to work and that you uh, you're good okay I feel like I should uh, guide you with the installation of the hood. Now, when you place this on, you put it to the forward front first because there's a lip there that has to slide under and then you pull the back toward. Now, I pointed out earlier that Freon line, you don't want to get it outside so that you're crushing this down on top of it. So. When you're putting it down, make sure you guide that wire up into, make sure it's up into the housing and hasn't uh, pushed its way out. Also, there's some little clips down here on either side that actually keep it from coming up. So when you go to take it off, you have to kind of pull out on that. But they should snap over and come flush with this little edge of the mounting tray on the bottom and then put your four screws okay that's it i'm going to put the remaining two and go finish my root there okay again so long until next time